Hey everybody, welcome back to our next week of Good News Club. It's good to have you all back. I so enjoy making these videos and I hope that someday you'll be able to communicate with me. I'd love to interact with you. You can always leave a comment down below or you can private message me and I'd love to hear from you. Remember, we've been learning about Queen Esther. That's why I'm wearing my crown today. And we're going to be learning more about her and her uncle Mordecai this week as well. So let's get right into our theme song today. for you. If you have a sore tooth, where do you go? You would go to the dentist, right? Of course you would, because the dentist knows how to deal with your teeth. But what about if your parents had a problem with their vehicle? What should they do? They might be able to fix it by themselves, but they also might want to take it to a shop, some type of mechanic or auto repair shop, to help them with their problem. What if, hmm, look at this one. What if you had problem with your homework, with your books and your studies that the teacher says for you to do and you don't understand what to do? What should you do? You could ask for your parents for help. I know when I used to be in primary school and I had problems with math especially, I would ask my daddy for help and he helped me. But you also might want to ask your teacher she could help you as well. Or if you have a tutor, they could help you. But you go to the person that can help you, right? Or oh, this last one. Where do you go if you are sick? You would go to the doctor because the doctor is trained to help you. You could also ask your parents for help, but the doctor would know more information and be able to give you medication for your sickness, right? Of course. So you would go to the proper place to get what you need. But what about this? What about this problem? The problem of a dark heart, the problem of sin. How do you take care of that problem? You can't do it on your own. Do you have a problem with sin? <laughs> I know I have a problem with sin. Everybody does because you're born with that problem of sin. No one has to teach you how to sin. You're born and you have that problem of sin. You have a desire to do sin. You're born with a want to, to sin. Nobody has to teach you. 
But God knew about that problem. He knew about your sin. And he knows that sin is a terrible thing because it separates you from him. There's a verse in the Bible that talks about sin. Let's see what it says. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20. It says, There is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. That means there's nobody perfect. Everybody has that problem of sin, except God and Jesus. You have that problem, so do I. Things like lying, fighting, cussing, cheating, all of that is sin. Anything that breaks God's rules, even things that you think that are against God, that's sin as well. But God, he knew about that sin and he made a way for him to take care of that problem. And that was by sending his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for your sin. Jesus died so that you can have your sins forgiven. He did not have to. God did not force him to die, but he chose to die and give his blood when he died on the cross. He took your punishment for sin. And because he did that, you can have your sin forgiven. He can take care of your sin problem because he died on the cross for your sin. He did what you needed to do. He took your punishment for sin. And after he died, on the third day after, we know what happened, right? Jesus rose again. He came alive again, and he's alive today in heaven. Wow, he took the complete punishment for your sin. And today you can make a decision to believe in Jesus as your savior. You can do that today. You can do it right now even. You can just pause the video here and, and make that decision for yourself. You can personally believe that Jesus died for your sin and came alive again. He did that. He loves you so much. The Bible says, for God so loved the world and the world is everybody, you and me and all the other people too. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for your sin. Jesus did that. It was a big sacrifice on his part, but he did that and he cares for you so very much. He wants you to believe in him and you can make that decision today. If you want to, you can make that decision. And if you ever need help, you can always let me know and I'd be sure to help you. I'd love to help you to do that decision. the wrong number. Okay then. Bye. Has that ever happened to you? Maybe somebody tried to call you and they reached the wrong number. Perhaps you tried to call somebody and they don't have any reception or any service in their area so that the phone call doesn't go through. Maybe you tried to text somebody and the text never reached them. Things like that happen. But things like that never happen with God. Because God, you don't need to write him a letter. You don't need to call him on the phone or text him to tell him something. You can pray to God and you can tell him anything. He is right there, ready to listen whenever you are ready to talk to him. Our memory verse today talks about calling out to God. And calling here does not mean on the phone. It means praying to him. Let's read our memory verse. It's found in Jeremiah 33 verse 3. And it says, call unto me and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33, 3. Now this verse is found in Jeremiah, which is one of the books in the Old Testament. We've talked about the Old Testament and the New Testament before. Do you remember how many books there are in the Bible? If you said 66, you are correct because there are 66 books in the Bible. Jeremiah is in the Old Testament which has 39, and the New Testament has 27. And it says, call unto me. God is telling you to call unto him by praying. You can pray and talk to God and tell him anything. You can call out to him. And it says, and I will answer thee. So he's saying that if you have believed on Jesus, that you can call unto him, you can pray to him, and he will answer your prayers. 
You see, sometimes when we pray to God, we don't know how he was going to answer our prayers. We don't know what he will do to answer our prayers. But God always answers prayers in three different ways. Yes, no, and wait. God answers prayers sometimes in ways that we don't even expect. He is powerful and good and he promises, just like it says in our verse, to answer our prayers. But if you have not believed in Jesus yet, then he can help you with your biggest problem, which is sin. Do you remember that little picture that I just showed you? It's right here. That little picture that I just showed you, here it is. He can help you with your biggest problem, which is your sinful heart. And he can help you because remember, Jesus died for your sin. He did that for you. And because he did that, you can believe in him. You can ask him to forgive your sin. If you call unto him and ask him to forgive your sin, he will. He will definitely do that for you. He promises to and he does not break his promise. Let's read our verse again. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33, 3. Yes, you can call or talk to God anytime, anywhere. If you are riding your bike to the shop, if you are at school or at home, or if you are walking on the road, anywhere, you can pray and talk to God. You can talk to God in the morning when you wake up, but also in the evening, also in the middle of the day or the middle of the night. You can pray any time to God and he promises that he can hear and answer prayers. Remember that when you have a problem, first pray and ask God to help you with your problem. See this boy here? He is praying. He is asking God for help. Let's read that together. Ask God for help. This boy here, I don't know what problem he has, but I know that he has something he is telling God about. Perhaps he has a problem with, maybe his parents are fighting and he's asking God to make them love each other again. You can pray and ask God for help with any problem that you might be facing. Maybe there is a problem with your family or maybe a problem that you're having in school or with a friend. You can pray and ask God for help. Maybe someone is sick. Whatever the problem is, you can pray and ask God to help you and he will help you. Because in our verse, let's read it. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33, 3. See, he says, call unto him and he will answer you. We're going to play a game with this verse. So I would like us to clap on two words. And when you're there watching this video, I want you to do it as well. Because I don't like to do it by myself. I want you to do it with me. So we are going to clap on two words, and those two words will be call and answer. Let's try it. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33, 3. Now, we are going to try to whisper. You know how to whisper, right? You talk real soft. We're going to try to whisper on two additional words. So remember, we're going to clap on, call, and answer. We're going to whisper on me and, what other word? Thee. Me and thee. Okay? Here we go. I might forget, but you don't forget, right? Clap on, call, and answer. Whisper on me and thee. Okay, here we go. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33, 3. All right. I think most of you got it because you're pretty smart. I know you are. Let's try read it. Just read it one more time. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33, 3. 
All right, now if any of you want to send me a video with you saying the verse, I would really like that. And you can look in the description for how you can get in touch with me and send me a video if you want of you saying the verse. I'm sure you could learn it, it's pretty short. But for now, let's go right into our missions time with Wilfredo today and learn chapter three of the Luis Palau story, Bold for God. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our online club. And today, we're going to continue with our mission story, Bold for God. So last week, we stopped where Luis and, and his sister are going to, are planning to make like a Bible club, tell others about Jesus, right? So today we're going to continue. It was one day for Luis's first Bible club meeting. Can you imagine coming up here and teaching? Will you be able to show someone what the Bible says about trusting in Christ? Luis could, and that day, five boys trusted, trusted Christ as Savior. Luis was so excited. What had Mrs., Mr. and Mrs. Paulo prayed for their son when he was still a baby? Yes, that God will use their son to help many people to come to know the Lord Jesus. But even that Luis had trusted Christ as, as his savior, he began to love other things, movies, soccer, friends, become more important to him than God. Louis stopped loving God with all his heart. He stopped reading his Bible. He stopped telling people how they could trust Christ as savior. One day in an art class, Louis, Louis's teacher criticized his painting. As the teacher turned to walk away, Louis mumbled a cursed word in Spanish. His friends laughed along with him. He didn't think his teacher would understand the word, but Louis was wrong. He was, he was sent to the headmaster, Mr. Cohen, the man who had paid for him to go to camp. Mr. Cohen told him, before you are punished, Paul, I want to tell you something. I think you are the greatest hypocrite I've ever seen in my life. I've watched you. You came to the Bible class, but you didn't live like a Christian. A hypocrite is someone who pretends to be someone he is not. Louis could not forget Mr. Cohen's word. Then Carnival we came. Louis and his, and his friends planned to attend parties and games at the university club. He thought he could for he he, he could for, he could forget living for the Lord Jesus. If he went to the carnival, but God the Holy Spirit was working in his heart. So Louis asked God for help to give up his sinful ways. The next morning when Louis woke up, his lips were swelling. Though they didn't hurt, his mouth looked as if he was stuffed with ping pong balls. What would you think that happened to you? Well, Luis was happy, and God has answered my prayers, Luis exclaimed. He quickly phoned one of his friends, I can't go to the carnival, my face is swollen, I must have a bad tooth. His, his friends tried to get him to change his mind. No, Luis said, I can't go. His friends came over to convince Luis to go with him. They came and talked to him, tell Luis, you, why, let's go, let's go to the carnival. But Luis was still refusing. Will Luis go to the carnival? If you want to know, you want to check up next week for what is going to happen. Stop and let me tell you.
crying. You know why they were crying? Remember last week we talked about this and that new law that Haman had made and the king had approved by that stamp on his ring and the decree went out all the Jews would be killed. All the Jews in Persia were to die on the 13th day of the 12th month. Oh, all the Jews all over Persia were crying and grieving and so very sad about this new law. They were feeling terrible. Many of them wore sackcloth, which is a type of uh, clothing. It's very rough when you feel it and it's made of goat's hair. They wore that to show how they were feeling when they were very sad and grieving about something. And they also would sit in ashes. Now you know what ashes are. They're the leftover from the fire, the black, uh, kind of like the dust on the bottom of the fire. Of course, it would not be hot when they sat in it, but they would sit down in the ashes and they would wear that sackcloth when they were mourning and crying. And that's exactly what they were doing. They were also fasting, which means they were not eating. All the Jews all over Persia, 127 provinces were doing exactly that because of this new decree, this new law. They were feeling so terrible. Look at this man here. I believe he's wearing some sackcloth right now. All of these people were reading it and they were wondering why, why has God done this? Even Mordecai, Esther's uncle, he was doing the same thing, wearing the sackcloth and sitting in the ashes and crying and asking God, this is just terrible. Why has this come? Why has this come upon us? When Esther heard what her uncle was, was doing, she decided to send him some clothes. And because she didn't want him wearing that sackcloth. But when Mordecai saw that the servant coming with the clothes, he would not accept it. He didn't even take the clothes. He sent them right back to Esther. And when Esther got them back, she knew that something was really wrong. And she had to find out what is wrong. Esther didn't know about the new law yet. She had no clue. She didn't know. Nobody had told her. Because remember, nobody in the palace knows that she is a Jew. She hasn't told anybody as yet. Well, Esther, she sent a servant named Hattach to go talk to Mordecai, and he'll be important in the lesson today. Hattach went to go talk to Mordecai and find out what's troubling you, Mordecai, what's wrong? See him here? He went to go find Mordecai and say, why are you so sad? Why are you crying? What is wrong? And let's see right in the Bible what Mordecai said to Hattach. Hattach went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasury. The treasury is where you hold your money for the destruction of the Jews. So Mordecai told Hattach the, the, about the new law, and he also told Hattach all the money that had been paid so that the Jews would die. Look at this. See that? That's called a scroll. Mordecai also gave Hattach that scroll and that had the law written on it, the new decree. Hattach went and gave that to Esther. And Esther opened that up and she read it. Now, if I were Esther, I would have been very, very alarmed and very surprised at this. Because remember, Esther is a Jew. Hattach, he doesn't know that. Nobody in the palace knows that. But Esther is, and she reads this law. All the Jews would be killed on the 13th day of the 12th month. She is a Jew, so it would include her. But Esther also knew that there was another law. And this law was a very, very important one. You see, what Mordecai wanted Esther to do was to go to the king and beg for their life. Beg and ask the king to save us so we don't have to die. Esther read that law and she was troubled. She was kind of worried. Mordecai wants her to go see the king 
to ask the king to save their lives? But Esther knew, you can't just go and talk to the king. In Persia, there was a very important rule. And the rule was like this. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king without being called or invited, there is but one law. What is it? Listen careful. To be put to death except the one to whom the king holds out the scepter, the golden scepter, so that he may live. Esther knew if anyone goes to the king and they are not invited, they will die, unless the king holds out his scepter. A scepter is like a, some type of rod that would show that is a very powerful thing for the king to have. Esther knew that. She must have been worried, though, because Mordecai wants her to go see the king. Esther has not been invited to go see the king for 30 days. The king has not called her, so she has not gone. But Mordecai wants her to go see? Ooh, Esther was worried. I would have been worried, too. But when you worry, you can bring your troubles to God. Remember our verse for today? Jeremiah 33, 3. Let's say it together. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33, 3. Yes, whenever you're having problems or troubles, you can bring your worries to God. Maybe you're going through something hard right now, like your parents don't have a job. Maybe you are having a hard time with your schoolwork, or perhaps people make fun of you for watching these videos. Whatever the problem is, you can bring that trouble to God. Ask him to help you. Maybe you're worried. You're afraid you could even be angry. But whatever it is, pray and ask God to help you. Remember, we had this picture of this little boy and he is doing just that. He is asking God for help. So when you have a problem that you're facing, ask God for help. He can help you in whatever problem that you are facing. Pray to him, tell him what's going on. He knows, but he wants to hear you talk to him. He loves it when you talk to him. Esther was worried about the situation that she was facing, and she knew that if she went to the king uninvited, she could be killed. She sent that message to Mordecai. And when Mordecai received that message, he sent her a message back. You might be wondering, why, is, why are they sending it through a messenger? That's because Esther wasn't allowed to go talk to Mordecai because he was outside of the palace. And that was part of the rule of being queen. That's certain things you can and cannot do. Hatach went to go see Mordecai. And Hatach told him what Esther had said about the law and about her maybe even being killed. But Mordecai, he told Hatach, go tell Esther that this law, she, she will be killed by it as well. Even though she is queen, it will still affect her. And he also told Hatach something else. He said, I know that God is going to save my people, the Jews. But if, if Esther goes to the king or not, I know that God will save them. But Esther's family and she may be punished. And Hatach, he went to Esther and he gave her that message. And Esther listened. And Mordecai, he knew. He knew that God is sovereign. God is sovereign, that means he's in control of everything. He has it all under control, even when it looks like we have no idea what's going on. But Mordecai knew that God was going to protect his people, the Jews. That's because God had a very wonderful plan. The Jews are the people group through whom Jesus came. Jesus was born by a Jewish woman, Mary. He was her mother. And Jesus, we know why he came, right? He died for your sins. He died for your sins because he knew about the punishment for your sin, that it separates you from God. But Jesus died for your sins so that you could have your sin forgiven. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, 
But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, even though you sin, God hates your sin, but he loves you. So he sent Jesus, God the Son, the perfect Son of God, to die for your sin. And he died, took the complete punishment, he bled, he died for your sin. And after he did that, God raised him back from the dead on the third day. Today he's in heaven, he's ruling as king. And you can believe in Jesus. You can have your sin forgiven because God has always promised to protect his people so that you can make that decision. And God did protect his people. Mordecai knew that God would protect his people even if Esther didn't go to the king. When Esther got the message from Hatach, she must have been thinking and she must have wondered, maybe what should I do? Esther knew what she had to do. She must go to the king. She decided to go to the king, even though her life could be in danger. It would be in danger. She wasn't sure what the king would do, but she decided I must go to the king as Mordecai, my uncle, has asked me to. She sent a message to Hatach and she said, go tell Mordecai, him and all the Jews in the capital city of Susa need to pray. Pray and fast three days and three nights for me before I go to the king. Pray and fasting often went together. Fasting means they would not eat and also they were not to drink for three days and three nights. When Mordecai got that message, he went through all the capital city of Susa and he asked all the Jews what Esther had told him. Pray and fast for three days and three nights for Esther. And at the end of that time, she would go to the king. Wow, Esther was brave, but she knew we can't do this on our own. We need to trust God. We need to ask God to help us. She knew that she could bring her troubles, her worries and concerns to God. She was praying and fasting too. So were her servant girls with her. But she also knew the other Jews in the city needed to do the same and pray for her. And everyone who Mordecai went to and asked, of course they would do it. Esther knew they have to rely and depend on God because he can help them. She knew he's in control even of this terrible situation. And if you have believed in Jesus, he is in control. Maybe you're facing something very hard. Maybe it's a very hard time with your family right now. Your parents don't have work, so you don't have very much money. Maybe you're having a hard time with your schoolwork you don't understand or you can't read good. Or perhaps people make fun of you for watching these videos. Whatever the problem is, even if it's something else, you can pray and tell God what it is. Ask him to help you and he will help you. Remember our verse for today, Jeremiah 33, three, call unto me and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33, three. Yes, you can call, you can pray to God. And when you pray to him, he answers in three different ways. Yes, no, and wait. When God says yes, he answers your prayer right away. We like that one a lot when God answers that way. But sometimes he says no, and sometimes he says wait. And when he does that, it's hard, but we have to trust that God knows what is best. Even when we can't see what's gonna happen or we're wondering why, God knows what is best. We have to depend and trust on him. And Esther knew that too. She knew that she had to depend on God. They have to pray and fast and ask God to help them. And that's exactly what she had the Jews do. And she did that herself as well. And she told Mordecai what to do. Mordecai went to all the Jews he could in Susa and he told them to pray and fast. And they started doing that. And Esther would go before the king in three days time, right after they finished praying and fasting. Esther, she was must have been brave. Here she is doing that. What a decision. That was amazing. He, Mordecai, he was relieved that Esther would stand up for her people, the Jews. He must have been very, 
very relieved, very excited, very happy. But also, I think he may have been a little bit nervous for her because she's putting her life in danger. Who knows if the king will put her to death? Esther told Mordecai, if I die, I die. Wow, what a commitment. Esther was choosing to depend on God. And we can pray and give God our troubles too. Whatever your problem is, if you have believed on Jesus as your Savior, you can pray and tell God whatever your trouble is. Ask him to help you. Remember, here it is. Ask God for help. Whatever problem you're going through, ask him to help you. Call unto me and I will answer thee. Ask God to help you. Maybe this week or right after this video, you can write down something that you're worried about or that is um, troubling you. And then you can ask God to help you. Instead of worrying about it or instead of going to everybody else and talking about the problem with them, you can go to God first and ask God to help you. Say, God, I need your help in this problem. Help me. Show me what to do. Tell him about it. But the biggest problem that God wants to help you with first is your sin. And because Jesus died for your sin, you can believe on him. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, it says right here that, right here, it says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And everyone is you and me and everyone else. If you call on Jesus to save you from your sin, you can be saved from your sin. You can believe on Jesus. Call, ask him to save you, and he will. This is a very serious choice because when you believe on Jesus, he will save you from your sin's punishment, and you'll have a friendship with God that will be great here on earth and continue someday in heaven. You can make that decision today to believe on Jesus. You could even tell Jesus something like this if you want to. You could say, Dear Jesus, I believe you died and came alive. Please forgive my sin and save me. Please give me a friendship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you tell him something like that and you truly mean it, he will forgive your sin and he will be your best friend. So from this week, you can remember that whatever problem you're facing, trust God to help you. He cares for you so much. If you have believed on Jesus as your savior and called and asked him to save you from your sin, remember he is there to help you with whatever problem that you might be having. Perhaps it's something that we talked about today, or maybe it's not, but whatever problem, God can help you with it. Remember, ask God for help. Just like this, this boy is doing here, you can do the same. Ask God for help with whatever situation you're facing. Tell God about it. Tell him how you feel. He wants to help you. He wants you to pray to him. And when you pray, remember God answers in three ways. Yes, no, and wait. Whatever way God answers your prayer, know that it's the way he wants to. And it might not be the way you want God to answer, but it's the way that's best. Because God is sovereign. He knows everything. He's in control of everything. He knows what's best for you. Maybe you pray and you ask God for something and he answers in a way that you don't even expect. But God knows how to, do, how to answer your prayers. He's in control. He's sovereign and he loves you. He only does what's best for you. So when you spend time with God this week, remember to pray and tell him about your troubles and your hard times that you're going through. Let's do our song and then we'll be done for this week. Hope you have a good week. See you next time. Bye.